I'll never forget the first time that I went down to Champagne to meet uh, Francois Roland Bilcar, who's the manager and, and the family owner of Champagne Bilcar Salmon. Um, when I arrived, he drove me up to the top of the hill overlooking the Valle de la Marne, um, above his village of Marie Sauvaille, and opened a bottle of wine for me. And when winemakers do that, you always think oh, that's going to be something special. Little did I know that it would be a bottle of 1959 vintage Bilcar Salmon Champagne. Now, it's pretty old, 59, um, and most wines of that age are flat and dead and not very interesting. But this was absolutely extraordinary, thrilling in every single possible way, and still really actively bubbly and fizzy. Um, and so obviously he hooked me on the first glass. Um, and from that moment onwards, I've never looked back. We went back to his house, where instead of the normal champagne trick of going out for a flash dinner, he cooked for me himself in his kitchen. Um, we played uh, rock music extremely loud. His wife, Edith, came along. Um, she drinks a little bit of champagne, but a lot of Bordeaux. Um, and we just had the most extraordinary time. Um, fast forward, you know, 25 years, and I'm a huge fan of this brand. Not least because the non-vintage is just delicious. The Brut Reserve non-vintage is one of the most consistent champagnes in the world. Um, but you may have heard of them for their rosé. They're very famous for Bill Cart Salmon rosé um, in a slightly sort of dumpy bottle. It's a very pale, demure, elegant rosé, um, which is just perfect as an aperitif, but also it's got enough sort of grip to go with um, starters as well. And then above that, they make uh, some in, uh, amazing vintage wines. Um, the white vintage could be called Cuvée Nicolas Francois, and the rosé vintage is called Elizabeth. They're amazing as well. And finally, at the top of the tree, there's a, a vintage white called Grand Reserve and also a single plot Pinot Noir uh, called Le Clos Saint-Hilaire. And that comes from a very beautiful little plot of Pinot vines just behind the winery. Um, and I was lucky enough to be the first person ever to taste the inaugural release of that wine. And I track it very, very carefully indeed. And I feel that in 30, 40 years time, there might be other lucky people like me going up to the War Memorial on the top of the hill behind the Champagne House and drinking that wine and feeling the same way.